Hey guys, it's Brie. Welcome back to my channel. Today's gonna be more of a makeup chit chat. Not too focused on the makeup, although I am gonna be doing my makeup while we're talking. But we're gonna be focusing on a topic that a lot of people deal with. A lot of people deal with cheating exes. We're gonna talk about it today because we've all been through it and sometimes you just need to feel like you got a sisterhood around you that understands you and you also need somebody to give you a little bit of some sound advice. In this video, I'm gonna be giving some advice from my perspective. I hope that everybody can respect that. If you have your own opinions or advice that you'd like to leave in the comment section, do it, please. Let's start a conversation down there because this video is actually gonna be much needed. So go ahead and keep watching this video, get you some wine, get you a snack, and let's get into it. Everybody knows that dating, relationships, starting over new in these days, difficult. It's hard. It is not easy to start over and be in a new relationship or even to be hopeful that you're gonna find a new relationship. And that's why I wanted to talk today about taking a cheating ex back. Now, I don't know how many of y'all have done that or have experience with dealing with an ex that has cheated on you in some way, somehow, you considered or actually did take your cheating ex back. Everything that I'm gonna talk about today is based on my own experience, which has helped shape my opinion and my beliefs that I have today. So this is just speaking from Brianna's point of view. So have y'all ever heard the quote that you teach people how to treat you? It sounds like a silly quote, but in reality, yes, you do teach people how to treat you. So usually when you are, you know, starting off a relationship with somebody, most of the time you have a discussion about, you know, cheating and what each person thinks cheating is. And you'll let them know like, you know, you're not gonna be cheating on me. I don't deal with that kind of stuff. That is a non-negotiable. If you ever end up in a situation where you have already handed out your non-negotiables to somebody and they proceed, to cross the boundary. Now you're put in a situation where you love this person, they've cheated on you, and you have to leave that person, right? It would be great if everything stopped there. You know, like somebody cheats on you, you decide that it's a no, you leave that person where they are, and you're done, right? You move on. But a lot of the times, that doesn't happen with relationships. A lot of the times, people get cheated on, and within a matter of weeks, maybe days, sometimes months, that person will make their way back into your life. Some way, somehow, most of the time, I find that they make their way back into your life when you're at your most vulnerable or when you're feeling lonely or even sometimes like when you feel like you're finally starting to find your peace and solitude and being peaceful by yourself. A like clockwork, they pop back up, right? Well, every time these people pop back up, because I'm gonna just call them these people, every time they start popping back up and you allow them back into your space, you're teaching that person that, okay, I said this was a boundary, but you can cross it. Even though I keep saying it's not, you can't do this. You did it, but I'm gonna take you back because I love you so much. And I have found myself in that position before and I know that I'm not the only one, which is why I'm talking to you guys about it because this is a very common situation. When we're in these relationships, it just seems like, um, sometimes you just fall so deep and you just, you can't get the potential of somebody out of your head. Like you see flaws in this person, maybe they've crossed several of your boundaries, but you get caught up on the potential that they have. And I'm just here to let y'all know, ladies, the Hope Scholarship is not okay. It is not okay. We're not gonna be sitting here wishing on a star, hoping on a, we're not doing that. If somebody is crossing boundaries consistently, no matter how much time you have spent with this person, no matter how much potential you, you think that they have to be a great partner, if they are violating your boundaries, it's a no, okay? Prior to getting into this, I was saying how, you know, it just seems like clockwork where exes will pop back into your life and it just seems like it's always timed so perfectly. Doesn't it always just seem like, my lighting is switching up, but it always seems like they time it so perfectly, they know just the right timing to get back in and it's really most of the time at a point where you're just like, oh, well, he said he's sorry. This time he said he's not gonna do that. Well. Here's something to think about. When we decide that we're gonna allow somebody to cross boundaries over and over, you have to really make a decision. Is this person really worth all of the things that they put me through? Is this person worth you feeling insignificant? Is this person worth you feeling insecure? 
Is this person worth you questioning yourself? When you're on the receiving end of somebody cheating on you, it really does something to you mentally. Like you go into a space where you're trying to figure out if you did something wrong. And most of the time, girl, no, you didn't. And let's stop there. Let's talk about that. A lot of the times when people are cheating on you, they have their own insecurities. And you know, it could be because they're not getting what they need out of the relationship, yada, 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 whatever. Usually they need a supply of whatever it is that they feel like they're missing because they themselves feel insecure and insignificant. Especially if you're dealing with a narcissist. Those people will really try to break you down no matter what. They will um, look for any source of attention that they can get if they're not feeling like they're getting what they want from you. And a lot of the times, again, if you're dealing with a narcissist, they will find different ways to try to break you down to bring you down to their level. And I know that, you know, a lot of times we talk about other women being jealous of us. Y'all, men can be jealous. You can be in a relationship with a man that is very much jealous of you, very much not feeling your success, very much feeling insecure around you, very much feeling small. So what they'll do is they'll go out and try to find somebody else that makes them feel, you know, like they got a little bit of power and maybe you just don't fit that bill. And if that's the case, you gotta make a decision that you're not gonna allow that. And it's, it can be so hard. Like I just know from experience that it can be really hard finding the strength to walk away from a relationship that you have invested time and energy into. A lot of the time I got caught up on time, energy, and potential that I put into the relationship. And it's really just not worth it. It's just not worth it. There's so many people on earth. What is it that would make you feel like you needed to take back a person that made you feel bad, bad about yourself? In my experience, um, I have been through several instances where an ex has done things to cross boundaries with me. Um, multiple boundaries. And I ended up getting caught up in this potential thing. I felt like I had spent so much time finally getting this man to like where I thought he was, you know, he wasn't perfect. I knew he wasn't perfect because he was doing several things that were just out of line. But I felt like I had gotten him to the point like where if somebody else had him, they would be taking all my hard work, pretty much. You know what I'm saying? But I was feeling like, you know, I done got him to a certain place where he's like finally knows how to treat me and it sidebar. If you have to teach somebody exactly how to treat you in a relationship, he needs to grow up and he needs to be by himself, okay? You're not a teacher, okay? You're not a coach when you're in a relationship. He needs to know how to do that already by himself. And if he doesn't have enough common sense and if he doesn't have enough home training to know how to treat women, move on but um, I was getting so caught up in this potential thing that I was just so like no it'll work we're figuring this out but no 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 in this perspective like when I'm saying no to cheating ex and no to these kind of things this is really from the perspective of somebody that's in late 20s early 30s not somebody that's um married with kids because I can't speak on that. I don't know what it's like to be married, have a husband, and have to consider what it's like to break up a, a household like that. But I do know what it's like to have to make a decision for yourself and even when a child is involved, you have to make a decision, hey, I'm worth more than this. I'm, I'm worth more than this situation and my happiness needs to matter more than the potential of this relationship and this person. I know a lot of times when we feel like that person is gonna go out and treat somebody so much better, they're not, okay? When somebody does you wrong in a way that's like really egregious and they repeatedly do those things to you, they're not just gonna miraculously go out and change for the next person that they encounter in life. It's not gonna happen. They're not gonna go out and change. They're not gonna go out and be better for the next person. You're not gonna be missing out on anything, okay? They're packing up and they're gonna take their show on the road and chances are they'll pretend that they're treating the next person great, but they're not. It's only a matter of time until their little representative goes away and they become exactly who they were when they were with you. I just really would hope that, you know, people that are in relationships or just got out of a relationship or pondering whether or not you should consider taking this person back, remember the way that you felt. It's literally never worth your peace of mind, your sanity, your emotional state to be dealing with somebody that's gonna mistreat you. 
And don't get caught up feeling like they're gonna go out and be the best person for the next person. They're not gonna do it. I promise you, they're not. Now here's the other thing that we need to talk about. I see a lot of people talking about relationships, you know, um, but I feel like the other really important thing is like when you are thinking about allowing somebody that has cheated on you to come back in your life, you have to think, this person has jeopardized your health. <sighs> listen, if you don't listen to nothing else, if somebody is willing to jeopardize their health and cheat on you, what makes you think they care about yours? They don't care. They don't have morals. No, none. It is very important to realize that it is, it's a big deal when somebody steps out on you and is unfaithful to you. You don't know what they have made themselves vulnerable to in those moments when you weren't around, when they was out there in the streets. It's too many diseases out here running rampant for us to be playing games like that, okay? We're not doing it. You're not doing it. There's so many things to consider when you start getting into that that territory and if you are young not to say that anything is wrong if you're a little bit older but i can understand like somebody that's older that's been married wanting to stay and figure out things in their relationship but if you're like in college you're in your 20s early 30s like me that is a deal breaker it's not okay it's unacceptable you do not need to stick around for any of that and I just really wanna make sure that the girls here on my channel, if you are a young girl and you are starting to navigate your way through relationships or anybody that's in the middle of a relationship and you're starting to feel sorry for your standings being single or whatever it is, if you're starting to feel like you're missing your ex, girl, please. There are too many people on this earth to be hung up on one person that will not treat you right. It's just too many people. And I've, went, I've gone through the stage already where I've missed my ex. So I've gone through the stage where I felt lonely. I've gone through the stage where I felt like <sighs> maybe I should just try to make it work. No, because when you come to your senses, it's just not, it ain't worth it, y'all. I'm gonna tell you that right now. The pain, the suffering, the hurt, the insecurity, none of it's worth it. And if you can find a way to come out on the other side, um, unscathed, and not feeling jaded by it and not feeling like, you know, relationships will never work out for you, you have won. You've literally won if you can find a way to pull yourself out of a relationship where you thought you could not live without it. I know it's hard like dating because y'all, trust me, I get it. Like it's, it's, it's hard dating. Um, and sometimes, you know, if you have superficial standards, which of course I, <laughs> I definitely had some, but sometimes you need to let superficial standards go. Like if you have a height requirement, girl, I'm talking to myself right here. You might have to let it go, Brianna. Yikes. There's things um, really important other than somebody being nice and tall and handsome and somebody having good looks. Like, does this person know how to treat you right? Was this person raised with some sense? Does this person have unresolved childhood trauma that's gonna spill over into your relationship? You know, like there's, there's a lot of things to consider. So my advice, honestly, to anybody that has dealt with anybody that has crossed your non-negotiables, take it for what it is and you're gonna have to move on because if you don't, you're literally only teaching that person that they can push your boundaries and that they can take it a step further the next time. And the flip side of that is, if something is not a non-negotiable, don't tell somebody that it is when it truly is not for you. If you know that if this person did X, Y, and Z to you and you would still accept them and take them back, there is no need to, to move the goalpost for somebody and be like, all right, well, I'll make an exception. Like, no, stick to your word, stick to your guns and be, and be consistent. Don't go back and forth on your word if you know that you're not gonna be able to keep it. I could even bring up the whole friendship thing because I know a lot of times when we're in relationships and we want to confide in our friends, um, you, you, you tell your friends your business and then, of course, your friends and family are gonna hold on to those things and stay mad at the other person. If you don't wanna deal with that, then you need to keep your stuff to yourself, okay? Um, if you're gonna be mad at your friends for holding you and your partner accountable for the things that you say, you might as well not even involve them in the first place. People don't realize 
your friends and family don't like to see you get hurt. They don't want to be a part of that. They don't want to see it. They don't want to accept it. So if you know that you're the kind of person that's just yapping about what he did wrong, but you know you're going to take him back the next day, just keep it to yourself. Nobody wants to hear a whole bunch of talk about how, you know, he did this, he did that to me, but I'm still going to take him back because nobody, because what? No. It's understandable when friends and family be holding grudges against your partners when they have done something wrong. I know in my case, if I was to ever, ever lose my mind and decide to go back to my last situation, they would probably ostracize me from the face. I would be excommunicated, y'all. And I would have to understand that they'd have made the right choice to get my crazy ass up out of here because I don't have no sense. Because we ain't got no sense at this point. When you share information with people that love and care for you, um, you have to respect the fact that they're not gonna be happy when you're being mistreated. The amount of time that I just spent on my lashes, unacceptable, not okay. I also wanted to add in y'all, it can feel like a bit of an ego boost sometimes when you have an ex coming back to you. But sis, keep your head up, okay? Stay up on game. Sometimes it's not the fact that they miss you or the fact that they've come back because they've changed. A lot of the times they're just missing those things that you give them access to. Did you let him use your car? Did you let him stay at your house? Was he homeless? Did you have a better family dynamic and he was getting some kind of stability from your family? Like, it could be anything. So I just want y'all to know, like, just because somebody comes back into your life, it does not mean that it's for the better. And it doesn't always mean that be it, they're coming back because they love you so much or because they've changed. The best thing that I feel like somebody that is single with no kids, if you find yourself in a situation where somebody is mistreating you and they mosey their way on back into your life, no. The answer is no. It might be a hard no for you to say, but the answer is no because I promise you, you do not want to have to deal with the heartache that comes with sticking around and dealing with a relationship that you should have left years ago. We're not dealing with anybody that is crusty and dusty and is only bringing his body and his looks to the table, okay? We're not. If he doesn't have anything to offer you besides heartache and cheating and maybe like, you know, a good time in bed, girl, there's plenty more where that came from, okay? You can find that anywhere. It's just better to hold out and save yourself for somebody that is a quality person, somebody that's gonna treat you the way that you wanna be treated. Unfortunately, I had to learn some things the hard way. If I can help save somebody from some of the pain and heartache that I've been through, simply by giving some very simple advice. Please, I'll do it any day, you know? And I know when I was receiving this advice myself, I definitely felt like I had it figured out, like, it'll work, things will be all right. But no, things were not all right. So for anybody out there that is in the middle of dealing with something and you know good and well it ain't right, girl, please, say hasta luego to him and let him go, or her, or whoever, or it. Let, let it go. That is the best thing that you can do for yourself. Maintain your standards. You're worth being treated like a priority and you're worth being treated like you are a prize. I just made this video as a reminder to let you guys know that you are valuable and you're worth more than being treated like you're disposable. Worth so much more. Get somebody that will treat you the right way because that person is out there and don't get caught up thinking that what you have right now is the best that you can do. Promise it's not. Especially if he ain't treating you right, girl. Step back, look at yourself and figure out why you have insecurities like you do or whatever you have from your history, your childhood or whatever that you need to get on with. Figure it out, get past that, and I promise you, you will come out so much better on the other side. Moving on from relationships can be really, really difficult. And in those lonely moments when you're feeling like you don't know what to do or feeling like you just want to go back to what was comfortable, just think about how many more people there are out there in the world for you to settle on one thing that makes you feel small. Never. So guys, that's the end of my video. If you've made it all the way through this video, clearly it hit home for you and I really hope that it resonates with you. Girl, you got this. I hope that you guys are already subscribed to my channel. If not, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Leave any advice that you have in the comment section. Let's start a conversation and I'll see you guys in the next one.